Hi everybody, Erin here again today, and I just got a new box from Deco Arts. I just became part of their Helping Artists program, and I got my first box of goodies to help celebrate. Let's take a look. Pull them out individually, and let's take a look at them all. Alright, so one of the things that I just don't really have a whole lot of, and I just actually forget to buy, is finishers. And so I picked up a whole bunch of different types of sealers and I pretty much grabbed one of every that they had. Whatever I could find that was some sort of a sealant or a finisher or anything along those lines, I kind of went on. I went for brush, I went for sprays, I, this is a gloss, here's two acrylic finishers, sealer finishers, this one's a matte, this is a gloss. That's kind of had fun and got one of each of them. Because there's a lot of mixed media stuff that I do that I really want to make sure that I have. You know, let's just lay it down so you guys can see all the goodies that I get. All right. When I was at the NAMTA art show, they were showing off these cool metallic lusters. And I got one. They gave me one. So I actually, and I loved it. It was really cool. So I picked up two more. Um, I kind of picked up different ones. So I picked up a black one because I thought that would be kind of cool to pick up black colors. And then a champagne. Uh, the one I have is more of an espresso color, so I tried to, I like the neutrally color, so that's what I went for. I also picked up some of their dimensional effects. This is a texture paste. I just want to see the difference between some of the ones I already had, because I'm probably going to end up doing a comparison and seeing how they're all different or the same. Uh, I picked up a new little container of uh, their crackle paste. Actually, I don't have this one. That was a different one I thought about. So I really went to, uh, went into their mixed media line and kind of got a variety of stuff. So I picked up their snow text because I've used this before. I have a giant container, but it's gotten dry. So I wanted a new version of that. And I have played with that one before and I loved it. Their gesso, I want to see how their gesso compares. Uh, the crackle paste and also crackle paint. I not played with those, so we'll have to. And then here I have crackle glaze. So I picked up a bunch of different crackling mediums just to see how they would work. I picked up their modeling paste and then a matte medium. So I just I kind of got a little bit of one of everything that they have for their mixed media stuff. That's what I was kind of going for. And then of course I had to get paints. So I had a really hard time picking what colors to get, and they had this uh, sampler packet. And so I got that, and it's a little bit of a variety of colors. Um, let's open it up. So I've got raw umber, raw sienna, uh, two different uh, ultramarine and psyo blue. And these are all in their traditions line. So green, white, opaque white. This is what's in their sampler pack. Red violet, a black, ooh, that's really getting fuzzy, I'm sorry. There we go. So a black, a red, violet. This is their blending medium. That's good. Here is a red light. Here is a glazing medium. Ooh, I didn't realize that came in there. And a yellow. So all these fun colors. Put these down here. So look at the variety that you get in that pack. It's pretty cool. And that, yeah, and that was kind of the point. The whole point was to kind of see and play with the materials. And then I just picked up, I, I went through my paints that I had and found colors I was short on. So I can always use a gray. Gray is easy. And then I like the Razzleberry. That was pretty. And then I picked up another orange. Picked up a second orange. I don't seem to have a lot of orange paint. So I really picked up a lot of the oranges. Uh, I picked up a new purple. Seemed to be short on purples too. These were all the colors that either I had one of or maybe only two of. So I didn't have a whole lot of the colors I'm picking. Uh, black Forest Green. I had lots of light greens, but I didn't have a lot of dark greens. Uh, black. You can always use black and I can always use white. So I definitely wanted to get a black and a white. And then here's another little one that I got. I got Antiquing Cream. Isn't that cool? I thought this would be kind of fun to have. This is what I would call your standard, just doing crafting acrylic paint. Um, it's all purpose for arts and crafts and stuff. This is more artist grade paint. Um, it's a little bit of a different type of viscosity and uh, a different type of pigment. So I just wanted to test the two and see the difference. I'm just gonna apply, and I, I did go for similar colors. I didn't wanna do white because I'm using white. I didn't wanna do black. So we're gonna go for the purples. 
So I'm just going to do a little dab. And as you can see, as it came out, let me just show this one a little again. So it kind of flows a little more easily. And then I'll show you this one. So this one, when it sets, you notice it's got, I don't know if you can see that from here. So as I dropped down the paper, it, it creates more of a peak. I don't know if you can see how it's got kind of a peak still on the paint when it came down, whereas the Americana, which is again, there's nothing wrong with either. They're both great paints. The Americana kind of blobbed out a bit. It didn't hold its firmness as well. Whereas when the Deco Art Traditions paint came down, so I'm gonna call it Traditions and Americana. Traditions came down, it kind of held together and made what I would call almost like a soft peak as if you were talking like you whipped your stuff. Yeah, there's my daughter, she's gonna help me out. Can you move that paint around for me? And I'm gonna move this paint around. So you can see the coverage here, it's a little bit thicker. She's moving hers. Okay, so my daughter was playing a little bit with this, and that's fine. But I just wanna test the feeling. This is a very smooth and creamy paint, and it definitely went on well. Um, this is also a very creamy paint. The coverage on both is fantabulous. As you can see, you, as long as you have a good coverage, it covers really well. I would, if I was gonna do a true painting project, and I was gonna do painting on canvas, I would probably go for this paint more. Say hi. Whereas this is just your general, I wanna paint on an object. I wanna paint something for a kid's craft. I'm gonna, you know, do general things. I don't really need to go for, for what I do, a fancy paint, but maybe with some of my mixed media stuff, I would lean more towards these, especially if the color palette was there for me. I just needed a thicker paint or a, I don't know, a better paint. Now, with this set, we also got a glazing medium and an extended blender medium. So if your paint that you put on your palette, you just need it to go a little bit further, you can add this, it's like it's starting to dry out, you can add this to it and it just kind of thins it out a little bit and it gives it a little bit of extension of your working. So it will not let it dry out as fast. That's the point of the extender and blending medium. Okay, so I went ahead and added a little bit of batch of green paint at the bottom here and I'm gonna show you what that's for in a minute. But for right now, we're gonna test out the glazing medium. So I really wanted to heat set and dry this. Now, one thing I will say is I was heat setting both of these paints. It could just be that I didn't hold the heat gun. This paint, which is the Traditions, did not bubble up as much as the Americana paint. So if you're looking for that effect, use the Americana paint. If you don't like the bubbly effect, then use the Traditions paint. So just as a heads up on that. So the purpose of the glazing medium is, let's say I wanted to add a layer of paint, but I did not want to disturb the layer color below. So I'm gonna add a little blob of glazing medium. You can thin this with water if you want to. If you feel like it's too thick and you want a much thinner coat, I just poured it right out of the bottle. And I'm just gonna apply a little, you wanna create a coat. Now you might see a little bit of a tint because my brush still has a little bit of green on it. So I'm gonna let this dry and it should dry clear. It's picking up a little bit of color because it may not be 100% dry below, which is okay. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna play with some of the other odds and ends of things. So, so we've got a glaze, a paint, and a paste. Now this one, because it's a paste, you could use this with a stencil or something. A glaze, obviously you're gonna see more of the color underneath, and then the paint is gonna cover up. So we're gonna see what the difference is. We're gonna try a little bit of all three. I'm gonna try and just use what's on the lid here and just kind of smush it down over top. And just throw my little way. All right, so this is the glaze really give it a good coat. And the one thing it said about this, and I've not played with this before, so this is new to me too. Don't worry about the fact that it's got lots of peaks and valleys, um, because you want it to have a little bit of, yeah, heavy coat, do not level. Let it have chunks, because I think that's what's gonna give you your crackling effect. All right, now we're gonna do the crackle paint. Let's see the difference. So this was definitely a glaze. You can see right through it. All right, let's check this out. So more of a paint. Let's put this over top and we're just gonna kind of paint. Splat, splat, splat. So it definitely looks more like a paint. And I'm gonna use the heat gun on this because that's probably what I'm gonna do just for comparison purposes. And then here is our paste, which is gonna probably be a much thicker, yeah, look, see how thick that is? It's almost like a gesso in a way. Really thick. 
a little bit, honey. Yeah. My daughter's right here helping me. So I did use my heat gun on some of the sections and then I, this is what I've been told before about any of the crackling paste. When you add heat to it, it doesn't tend to work as well. Um, the paint did in the areas that wasn't super thick. It started crackling up a little bit. The paste and the, and the glaze, it's dry. It's completely dry, but it didn't really do anything crackle. So what I did is I added another layer of just the paint. I added another layer of the modeling, or not the modeling paste, sorry, of the paste. And then up here, I did the glaze on top of the purple because I ran out of the green space. So I'm letting those air dry. I'm not putting any kind of heat gun to them at all. And as you can see, this one's already starting to kind of do the crackle effect. And it's literally been two minutes and this is starting to do it as well. Um, I think this is too thick and I think this is too thick, which is why it really didn't do it. I still haven't seen much of the crackle paste or the glaze yet, but we'll come back to it. This is dry, so let's test this out. So right here, um, we've put our glazing medium, which is this one right here over top. Now let me show you what can happen. So I'm just gonna take, and I'm gonna stick with the same kind of paint. And I'm just gonna take a light coat, just a super light coat, and this is just the raw sienna. Um, I'm just gonna take a tiny bit. And you can see here's the coverage. I can go over top of this and it's not blending. And that's the point. You wanna add a layer of something, but it doesn't blend. The whole point is, is it won't pull up the color underneath as you're getting this wet, because it's created a sealant, like a, a coverage base. So you could go through and add layers and layers of color. You could cover something up you didn't like. It gives you a way of covering something up, adding another layer of something. I mean, you can go through and it won't blend however you wanna do that. So it's just, it's a cool way of doing, uh, adding another layer without blending is the bottom line. Okay, so we're gonna move on to another sheet. We'll come back to this guy and we'll keep taking a look at what happens to our crackling mediums and so forth. I'm liking the paint one so far, but it definitely does cover up. Now you could add, it did say, you could add a tint to the crackle medium. So that's something, and I'm sure you could do the same thing for the modeling paste. Okay, I have not tried out all the different mediums that I just got. So I got modeling paste, matte medium, Snowtex, Antiquing Cream, Gesso, and Dimensional Effects. These are the other fun mixed media. Oh, and then our Metallic Lusters. One of these I already had, um, but I'm gonna test it with the other ones just to kind of compare. So I did pick a colored sheet just to see how well it would cover it up um, versus just a white, because a lot of these are white based, so you're not gonna see what I'm doing. So we're gonna pick a color for us to try it out on. And I'm gonna use a, just a spatula for most of these. All right, so our dimensional effects. All right, so here we go. Now, the purpose of this is white textural medium to build up 3D design. So it's the whole point is to create, I guess it's gonna keep its shape. So it's a very, very thick paste. Doesn't have anything in it. I just think it's what's gonna do is it's gonna, if we make something blobby, so I'm gonna leave, leave a nice big blob there. We'll see if it keeps its shape. I'm not gonna heat set any of these guys either. So this was the dimensional effects. The snow text has kind of a snowy, I'm gonna use what's in the cap. Has kind of a snowy effect, and I've played with this one before, it's kind of fun. It just, it gives it the feeling of snow, but it's also a really cool texture, which is pretty cool. I like the snow text. I've played with this before and I've really liked it. They always show like you've got a snowman and it kind of sets, but it really adds a fun texture to what you're doing. So now we have the gesso and this looks like a really creamy gesso. Hang on, let's use this. Nice, good and creamy. I like the coverage of this. It's not super thin, it's not watery. It's, all, it's like a nice, good cream paste. Um, and now we have our modeling paste. So this should be a little bit thicker. So this is another really thick one. Oh, it's even thicker than the texture paste. So in terms of thickness, I think we have like a one, two, three. Ooh, really nice and thick. So they're saying this is a matte medium. It's similar to decoupage, or if you're gonna do like photo transfers, uh, a barrier, barrier similar to the glazing medium. But instead of this having a shiny, this had kind of a shiny, this is gonna be a matte effect. So it's probably gonna be a very thin, oh, not super thin. 
it's thinner than the gesso. I'm just gonna use it some the cap here. So it does have a thinner quality than the gesso. See how thin it is and you can see how close it's just gonna cover up what's underneath. I still got a little bit of paint in here which is why you're, you're seeing some of the color, which is fine. So you can use this as, I'm sure it dries clear, but it's gonna have a matte finish. We're just gonna leave this, cause you're not gonna leave this chunky, you're gonna leave this pretty transparent. And it does take color. See how it's mixing with the paint that's already in my brush? So you can add a color to that. And you could probably add a color to all of these. I have no doubt in my mind. Let me just smear this in just to show you. So the Antiquing Cream is another new one. Uh, use on non-porous surfaces. Fast drying yet non-permanent. Non-porous. Well, I don't know. I've never tried it. Let's just see what it's like. So it comes out like a paint. See what happens when it dries. So we are gonna try out the three different types of metallic clusters. Now, this one I picked up when I was at NAMTA and I actually went to the Deco Art booth. They weren't too far down for where I was working with Canvas Core and Tide of Angels. And I asked if I could have a sample when I came back. So we're gonna do this one first. And they were using on frames and stuff. I am gonna use this on a project coming up. And I used this color and this color. So you'll see this in a couple of days show up how I used it on something else. And it really gives a fun effect. It really gives a pretty sheen. It goes on, it's a really, it reminds me a little bit of Inca Gold in a way, but it's really cool. All right, let me clean off my finger. And it's just, I don't know if you can see this on my finger. It's got, it's a really pretty kind of shimmer to it. Careful. Next we're gonna do, and I'm gonna use a different finger so I don't, right here. So it's got pretty good coverage. This is definitely a lighter color and there's more colors than what we have here. And I'm sure you don't have to use your finger. You could use something else. And again, it just has a really pretty sheen to it. The last one we're gonna try is the metallic. Ooh, this is pretty. This is really, really easy to put on too. It doesn't have, it's not as thick here. Just put it right here, right here. Just in here. Ooh, I like this one. Look at that pretty gray. It's called, this is called Black Shimmer. Over, over here, over here, over here. I think it was, this is That's your spot, okay. So it just, it really creates. And look how good of a coverage it has. So we're gonna let all these sit and dry and we'll come back later and I'll show you all about it. All right, so let's take a look at what we've done. Now, initially when I had done all the crackling paints of all different kinds, I had um, used a heat gun, well, as I had suspected, and I just was trying it to see if it would work. Heat guns and crackle paint don't work too well. But especially the paint, glaze did nothing, and the paste did a little bit, but it more bubbled. So I did a second round here, here, and here. This is the glaze, the paint, and the the paste to see what would happen. Just let it air dry and let it let it go overnight. So as you can see, the crackle paint did a good job crackling. I did not put a huge coat. I mean, this one actually did pretty okay, even in the lumpier parts as it let it set overnight, even after heat drying. So the paint you could probably get away with heat drying and then letting it air dry. The paste on the other hand, none of the part that I had heat set and the really thick stuff did anything. So, but when I went back and redid it with just, you know, what was left in the lid, um, it did a fantastic job crackling and in some thicker parts did a really good job too. So I think it would work really well with a stencil. I do, however, really like this bubble effect that it has because I use the heat gun on it and it's, it's maintained like the thickness of the bubbles. It's really three dimensional. I don't know if you can see that really well. So that's pretty cool just in and itself. That's kind of a fun way of doing it. The crackle glaze, when I heat set it, did nothing. It just made these kind of like little, I don't know, rough patches. But when I went back over, and at first I didn't think it was doing much of anything, and I'm gonna see if I can try and show it to you. It looks like it's got like scale skin kind of, and it's really hard because it's still very glazy, but it does, I think you can see just a little bit of it. It did crackle. Now I did not put a very thick coat on. Um, I bet if I went back and did a thicker coat, I think you can see a little bit of the crackling right there. It's got a very faint hint of it. The light just keeps hitting it, it's hard to see, but it is there, I, I, there it is. You can see a little bit of it right in there. I'm sorry for the gross fingers, I need to change my fingernails. Um, or my paint stuff. All right, so now, polish, that's the word I'm looking for. 
Okay, so one thing I was not aware of, and this is something I did another project and I was not 100% aware of a few things. These are the different types of metallic lusters. And once they are dry, look, they don't come off. They don't, they, they really do dry to a nice sheen. And they don't, a little bit comes off, but not much. That's pretty cool. So these are the three colors I have. Now we're gonna go back into the uh, mixed media stuff. Here's our gesso that we originally had. Here is the Snowtex. Um, this right here is the dimensional effects and I did come up to it a couple of different times and it took a long while to dry, but now it is dry and look how three dimensional that is. I put a blob on there and it did not deflate in any way, shape or form and it's really quite stiff and hard. So it would take some time to dry once you put your texture pieces on from the dimensional effects, but once it does, it's pretty cool. And then this is the modeling paste, which is right here. So, and it did a pretty good job of maintaining its stiffness. I did not make this super thick, but I did a pretty good job. And then here's the snow text. And look, I made a big blob and this is hard as a rock now. It's really cool. Here is the matte medium. This is the one with the color. Um, as you can tell, it did keep the brush strokes. So if you didn't want to see brush strokes, you would really have to do a good job of doing a nice even coat. And I thought that the little lines, I don't know if you can really see them, you can kind of see a hint of them, almost looks like little veins from where I put the splotch of just the lid from the container um, would settle down and kind of flatten out, but they didn't. So you really have to make sure you put a nice clean coat on if you don't want to see lines on there. All right, now this is the new one. And I've not played with this one too much. It's called the Antiquing Cream. Now it says to do it in non-porous surface and paper is a little bit porous. It, what it says to do is put it on, let it dry. Then what you do is you go back, and I'm just gonna use a baby wipe, and you rub some off. And what it's supposed to do is leave kind of, I guess it depends how much you rub off and how you do it. It's supposed to leave kind of a finish and you don't put it on the entire project. My guess is to make it look antique, you put it on sections of the project and then wipe it off and then you have to go back in with a sealer. So you could go back in with your, oops, your matte medium and seal it all so this doesn't move and readjust. So this would be good on wood, this would be good on ceramics, on all kinds of larger objects. Um, things that you wanna make kind of antique uh, plasters things like that if you've got molds of any kind. So it's just kind of a fun thing to do. Or you could use any of the sealers, any of the spray sealers would work really well too. So this is a little bit of the stash that I ended up getting. Uh, all the fun things from Deco Art. Some of these products I'll be using in these upcoming videos. So just kind of to keep a look at. So thanks for joining me. Thanks for checking a look at all my fun new doodads that I just got in. And Yay! Thanks so much Deco Art for letting me be a part of your helping artist program. And please subscribe and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye bye!